What's up, Future Fighters? Zack Zack here. I got a deck profile for you guys. This deck profile is featuring Dungeon World. And uh, it's an adventure-focused build. So this is the updated set from the Soul of the Omni Lords. And um, the build is pri primarily, uh, primarily adventures now. I mean, you can still do hybrid, but the first take on the Dungeon World deck that I wanted to build was adventures. So first is the buddy. Um, he's been my buddy for a while, but for those who don't know, he's um, <clears throat> Dancing Magician Tetsuya. <clears throat> he's a 2 1 2 size 1 with the ability Deaf Lyric when this card link attacks with another adventurer choose a card in the link attack and for this turn give that card double attack this ability can only be used once per turn so he's pretty good I mean all the weapons in your deck are also adventurers so he gets a link attack with almost everything in the deck to force it to do a double attack so of course we play 4 of Dancing Magician Tetsuya <clears throat> Next size one in the deck is Swordsman of the East, Zanya. So he's the Katana old dude, but he's a size one, 5 two, one and he has the ability. You may only call this card if your buddy monster is an adventurer, so Tetsuya. If there is a card on your field with a Katsuki in its name, or there is a card in your drop zone with mission, this card gets moved. So being adventurers, I do play eight different missions. And it's not hard for his ability to be active. I use him in the deck as kind of a pseudo shield. <coughs> because, you know, Dungeon World is pretty... Can have paper defense if you're using, like, adventurers or mixed. <coughs> so it's nice to have, first of all, the 5k clearing power. And second of all, the ability to soak up an attack. And third, he kind of synergizes with Hot Springs, so you can try and force Hot Springs to actually go off. Third, we play <clears throat> Providence Baron Shido. So he's got the ridiculously weak stats of 4, 2 crit, which is very good, and 4, four 10 defense. Um, the numbers are a play on his name, which is uh, Shido, if you like to try and translate, it's like 4, 10 or something. So that's where his, <clears throat> his stats come from. But to make up for it, he has the ability Shadow Dive. This card can attack your opponent even if there's a monster in your opponent's center. And when this card deals damage to your opponent, you gain a life. So, for me, the hopping over the big butts is pretty nice. It's mostly the life gain that's buying me the valuable time that I need to do the plays that I want, to live a little bit longer. Um, I actually enjoy this card a lot. He wasn't in there before. It was uh, the El Quixote clone, but I don't really, I didn't really care for the El Quixote. Um, that, and because I can open up him on my first turn, actually swing for two crit and try and regain some life, and then he could take a hit. Um, the, sec the second to last size one we play is Twin Tail Inc Incubus. It is a 2 on 1, size 1. When this card enters the field, you may pay 2 life. If you do, search your deck for up to one card with mission in its name and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. This card is very important, I think. Um, very important for, for making sure you get missions in your hand. It's important because it's a body deck is, that can act as a mission. I think it's very necessary so you can get the extra form of party or the extra mission you need to get form of party off so you can search your deck for your weapon search your deck for the size 2 that searches for another weapon it's for me it's been it's skyrocketed the consistency of the deck a lot so I, I mean if you're having trouble drawing your weapons or the cards you need to get your full feel going I would try running I would definitely run the twin twin tail <clears throat> The last size one we play at two is Apprentice Knight. Oh, Apprentice Knight Rue. So it's a 4 2 1 size one with the ability. If you have a knight item equipped, so all the items in my deck are currently knights, this card gets plus 3,000 power. So it becomes a 7 2 1 size one swinger. This is very good for me. Um, just being able to have more cards that can swing over things or swing at things by themselves. There are some cards in the game, like with Wizards, they might have Hardy, for example, that can just discard to prevent link attacks. Or other big cards that I can swing with Tetsuya to be a 9k link attack and then swing over something else again. It's very important. Um, I only play it at 2 though, so I mean, you could take it or leave it. There are other cards you could probably play to swing more. Maybe you could play another Incubus and Zanya instead. But I do enjoy the 7k clang power of this card. <clears throat> now for the size twos, we play Baptism Knight, Camille. Uh, he's a new card from Assault the Omni Lords. He is a 5-2-3 size two. Call cost, pay one gauge. When this card enters the field, if you have an item equipped, search your deck for up to one knight item, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. 
When this card attacks, if you have two items equipped, put the top card of your deck into your gauge. So that ability, all of his abilities are really nice. Um, what I like to do normally is I'll hopefully get into a weapon with either the missions or Camille, or uh, just drawing it normally. Equip an item, play Camille, and then you, you play another item. So you get automatic, you get a big field. Or if you have multiple missions, if you have a former party and another thing, and Twin Tails, you can search for two former parties, play both of them. The first one you search for the item, the second one you search for Camille. Camille searches for another item, you now have a full field again. It's... I like it a lot. It's really annoying the consistency that this deck can get the same exact field going on and on and on over and over again. And I think it's mostly derived from the mission card form of party. Um, but he's pretty strong. The getting the gauge is extremely useful because the normal plays that I do require three gauge. So it's one for the weapon, one for Camille, and then one for the extra mission. And that's what a lot of the times I need the three. So I'll actually have no gauge going into my attack phase. And Camille will allow me the extra gauge for the Pillar of Fire or the Divine Protection of Salsana. Very important. So I play him at four. Just because it ramps up consistency. And then the last card, the last monster of the deck is Brave Drum. He is a five, three, two, size two, call cost. Pay one gauge, put the top card of your deck in this card soul. Junk Drill. When this card attacks your opponent, it's monster in the center, play rock, paper, scissors. If you win, he gets penetrate for the turn. Um, I play him at three copies because I was tired of opening up with one crit or two crit dudes. Um, three crits nice. Soul Guard is especially nice against some types of like rush mirror matches. So I mostly play him in there for some more defense. Um, the three crits very nice with Tetsuya. The three crits nice to open. The Soul Guard is always nice to have if you're trying to stall for time. Kind of like the same mindset that Danger World uses with Iblis. They just kind of throw their Soul Guard option, their one gauge Soul Guard option in the center while I try and just draw into something useful. Um, I will always like Drum. I don't play Naboru because he's one crit opener. I mean, he's nice. He can only attack the center. He's 6-1-5 with double attack and move. If I did want to play a card like Naboru, I would probably end up ramping up Hot Springs. But uh, for right now, I think Drum is the way to go for me. Starting up with spells. First, we have our four of shield, Divine Protection of Shalsana. Um, cast cost, pay one gauge. You may cast this card during attack in your opponent's turn, counter, nullify the attack, and gain a life. So I think it's a pretty good shield. It's It doesn't have the, you have to have your center open thing, so I guess that's why it costs one gauge. And being able to protect your creature that's even in the center and gain a life is really, really nice. <clears throat> Next we play four copies of Quintessence of Cassiard. I think that's how the name is. Cassiade. You only cast this card if you do not have a monster in the center. Yeah, but... Counter. The next time you will be dealt damage, it is reduced by three. Um, going along with the whole adventurer mentality, um, the deck I've seen, or I've played, has some paper thin defenses. So I'm max. I play four and four of all the shields just to ensure that I actually get to my combos because it, it it does happen. You don't draw into the the one weapon you need to actually get the whole deck rolling, and trying to keep myself alive is very important. Even even when you do. Get into your combo if you're like one or two damage short and you're not playing the impact. You're gonna need some defense to keep you alive. Plus, the mirror match is way annoying. Um, next card we play is the, the mission card form party. So I've been talking about this over and over again for deck's consistency. It is a set spell. If another card with mission and its name is placed on your field, you gain a life. Search your deck for an adventurer and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck and put this card into your drop zone. So, yes, it does work. If you play one form of party, you play a form, another form of party, this one acts. You can just search your deck for any adventurer and put it in your hand. And with Incubus or you play any other adventurer, it starts ramping almost every card. All the creatures are adventurers. All the weapons are adventurers. None of the spells are adventurers, unfortunately. That would be amazing, though. Um, the other mission cards we play is, first we play two mission card, Reset Nazar of Hot Springs. It's also a set spell. All missions, I guess, are sets. They have the set impact from the new set, too. When your adventure is destroyed by an attack, put up the two adventure from your drop zone into your hand. Put this card in the drop. Um, I only play two of this right now because my opponents like to, when, whenever I drop it, they don't attack my creatures, which is not a nice benefit in some ways, but also it's kind of cloggy in that sense, too, if they never want to attack my creatures. With the Zanya, for example, it helps to force Hot Springs, and with Naboru, it would help to force it even more. 
But I think two's pretty good right now. Um, a, a card that I do really like a lot right now is mission card defeat the monsters. It is also a set spell for cast cost one gauge. When an opponent's monster is destroyed with your adventurer's attack, put the top card of your deck into this card's soul. When this card's soul becomes two or more, put this card in the drop zone and put all the cards in this card's soul into the hand. You can only set one to feed the monsters on the field at a time. <clears throat> really good. Um, it helps me draw into defensive spells when I'm trying to go all out. It With all the clearing power that some of the creatures have, like that 7k swinger and my adventurer weapons, um, it's really easy to clear monsters and get cards for this card's soul. I'm even tempted to play more version, more copies of Defeat Monsters, but we'll see how that happens. Um, next we play one copy of the Grimoire Corn clone, Oracle of Tubal. You know, I cast this if you have five life or less, discard your entire hand, and then draw three cards. Um, you can get pretty low pretty easily, so... And it's also really easy to not draw any defensive cards, so... This works really well with missions because you can keep playing mission. You can play all of your missions on the field, then Oracle to Vol, Oracle to Vol, and then reap the benefits of your missions during your attack phase or your opponent's attack phase. Next, we play two copies of Hidden Crossbow. Um, I had none originally, but I bumped this up to two because I was I, was, I included Drum, and this card is pretty good because counter destroy a monster in your opponent's field with three thousand or less defense. So unlike Pillar of Fire. This card can be cast if you have a monster in your center, which is very useful when you're trying to stall with soul guard, soul guard options. However, that does not detract from the three copies of Pillar of Fire. Um, this card has stri strikes fear into lots of people. It's a cast cost. Pay one gauge. You only cast this if you do not have a monster in the center. Destroy a monster on the field with 6,000 or less defense. Um, it's really good. A lot of the time, I kind of just drop it in response to things. That way, I ensure it's going off. It's a very potent, it kills a lot of things. It even kills size threes and magic coil very easily. It's really a very powerful card. The one gauge is a little bit difficult because now I've taken out the El Quixote, but with the Baptism Knight, it, it, it becomes a bit easier to play some of your defensive spells. Now for the items. We have first, we have Flash Lance Blitz Tiger. It is a 4-1 item. Equip costs one gauge. If you have this card equipped, you may equip one Savage Lance Eyes and Tiger. So yes, with this you can actually dual wheel with Dungeon World, which is pretty cool. And Eyes and Tiger being this card right here, the other weapon in the deck. Um, if you have Savage uh, Lance Eyes and Tiger on your field, this card gets plus four thousand power, and it normally has Penetrate, which is pretty nice. So this becomes an eight k one crit weapon with Penetrate. It clears a lot. With Tetsu, he's swinging at 10, so it goes over a lot. And the other card, Savage Lance, Eyes and Tiger. It is a 3-2 item. If you have Flash Lance, Blitz, Tiger on your field, this card gets plus one critical. And its equip cost is just one life. Um, <clears throat> so I guess a lot of the controversy initially was trying to figure out what order. Do you, do you have, is there an order you have to play these cards? And from, my, and from what I've seen through the Japanese rulings and through Facebook discussions is that there is no set order. You do not have to play this item first in order to equip this one. You can play this one, equip this one, and they both work. I mean, you can try and find the rulings, but from how I understand it is, you play one, you play the other. Since you can only have one item on the field normally, you, it would be destroyed, but the effect of Flash Lines, Blitz Tiger, is in effect, so you would be you would be able to retain the copy without having to discard the other one. Um, that's how I'm thinking about it. There might be better ways of wording it, so look it up on the, the Buddy Fight Q&A if you have questions. If it's not there, it should be up there soon, the answers to these questions. <clears throat> and last but not least, um, I'm putting a lot of match videos in the next week or so of me versus of this deck versus uh, other decks that I play in my Friday, normal Friday night tournaments. So first, we go over the sideboard. We play two copies of Basilisk Slime. It is a dungeon, <clears throat> it is a dungeon enemy. It's a 3-2-1, size 1. Petri, Petri, Petrification. When a monster enters your opponent's field, you may pay 2 life if you do rest that monster. Um, this card, this card is really good against some of the size 3 double attackers. Um, just because it stalls for the extra turn, you would, I mean, you normally be out that 2 extra life anyway. <clears throat> but it actually buys you an extra turn, and a lot of the size 3 big butt double attacker decks will just kind of be upset that you played this kind of a card. To combat the size 3 decks again, we play Rolling Stone. So Rolling Stone is a cast pay 2 gauge, giant steel ball, 
Put all soul from both players' center monsters into the drop zone and destroy both players' center monsters. In other words, there is no di disadvantage if there is no monster in your center. So, I mean, it just clears your Seegers, your Yami Ghettos, some of the other really annoying big cards. I mean, I've used this on cards without soul, too. We play three copies of Barbed Wire. Um, I don't think this card killed Kaiseron, but it's still a nice card to have in your sideboard to hate on Danger World and Hero World in general. Um, this card is counter. Rest an item on your opponent's field. That's it. It's free to use. At that they try to go to activate ability or uh, cast a creature, you can just rest it automatically, so they can't even spell null it. It's really it's pretty good. Um, it's a it's a better shield than. Uh, Quintessence of Cassiard in some cases just because that only reduces three damage and, if the, and Potentially you could be reducing a danger or weapon from that is four or five crit rest it or Kaiser on which could be a double attacking three crit rest it. It's pretty good. I Play one copy of mission card rest at Nazra hot springs inside Um, this is just in case I'm playing against some kind of control where they're just attacking my creatures all the time I'm gonna play play another one of these so I can try and recoup and then lastly, <clears throat> for the mirror matches, I play Young Pope Alex, and against the 100 Demons. It is a 3-2-1, size 1. When this card a link attacks with another adventurer, destroy a spell on your opponent's field. I play 2. 100 Demon set spells are super annoying, and as annoying as the Dungeon World set spell mission cards, I want to get rid of them pretty, pretty quickly. So this is the deck profile for my Dungeon World build, featuring adventurers. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm definitely trying to figure this deck out. I think this right now has got a pretty good groove. It's got a pretty good level of consistency, but I'm always looking to make new improvements. I mean, through my testing, I figured out that Shido is still quite necessary for the deck over El Quixote. The El Quixote opener is really blow a blower, and it might be El Quixote itself might be better with Tetsuya and the impact, but I'd rather just swing with a three crit alternative with Tetsuya anyway. That's the deck profile. Um, like, comment, subscribe. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.